we're solving a matrix equation for the stream function, a psi equals b, where psi now is a column vector uh, consisting of the values of the stream function on all the points of the grid, the interior points and the boundary points. A is an mn by mn matrix. Um, we've written the equations for psi on the um, interior points, so now we have to discuss the equations for the stream function psi on the boundary points. So this is our domain. The boundary has four sides. I've labeled them uh, left, uh, right, bottom, and top. Uh, we're doing natural ordering. So the first grid point is labeled 1, and then we go along the x-axis to the grid point n. Then we come back to the beginning again and keep going across until we get to the top, which is starting at 1 plus m minus 1 times n and finishing at m times n. So we need to now discuss what are the appropriate equations uh, for the stream function on the boundary. So let's go one by one. So we'll start with the left-hand side. Uh, that's at the first grid point in Kasai, which is on the cylinder. So the left-hand side is the cylinder boundary condition. Uh, the cylinder boundary condition for the stream function is simply the stream function at the first grid point on psi at all the grid points in theta is equal to zero. Okay. What are the k values then on the left-hand side? So we have k starting at 1, and then the next grid point has to increment by n because we're doing natural ordering uh, going along the x-axis first. So if I use the MATLAB notation, it will go up by n, and then it will finish at the last grid point which is 1 plus m minus 1 times n. So this, uh, this 1j index then translates into k. And then in the matrix A, we need to replace row k by the corresponding row of the identity matrix. The identity matrix here is the mn by mn identity matrix. Then the 1 in that row will pick out the right psi, and then the right-hand side uh, in the same row corresponding to that value of k, we have a zero element. So that will force psi to be zero for the values on this left boundary. For the right boundary, that's the maximum value of psi, so that's the free stream. And the free stream boundary condition is psi at the largest value of i, which is n, for all the angles is equal to e to the psi sub n times sine theta j. So that's the free stream boundary condition. Uh, what are the values of k here? So we start at n we increment at n and we end at mn. So the value here would be k equals n, increment n, finish at m, n. Okay? So for these rows of the matrix A, we need to replace by the corresponding rows of the identity matrix. But now this is an inhomogeneous boundary condition, so we have a non-zero right-hand side. And in those rows on the right-hand side, we have to put the free stream condition. So that will force psi to equal the free stream uh, boundary condition on the right-hand side of this uh, boundary. Okay, now let's go to the bottom. The bottom and the top are periodic boundary conditions. The um, bottom corresponds to theta equal to minus 
h, right, where one below zero, one grid point below zero. Uh, what is the boundary condition on the bottom? So we have our psi at the bottom, so this is for all i, for all i. The bottom will be the first grid point. And that's supposed to be equal to the m minus 1 value, right? One, one before we get to the top side. So I'm going to write that as minus psi i m minus 1, and that is equal to 0. Okay? So what are the k values here for the bottom? That's fairly simple. So k starts at 1, increments by 1, so in MATLAB we don't need to write the increment, and then ends up at n. So that's the value here. This is k then. So this would be psi sub k minus, and then this is something shifted from k. So you're going to have to work that out yourself uh, using a paper. How is this shifted? And uh, you can also look at my lecture notes. Then in this k row of A, we need to uh, replace that k row by the difference between two rows of the identity matrix. And then we'll have two ones in that row, and that row will enforce that this equation is equal to zero, meaning the right-hand side has to be a zero. Okay, then the last one is the top, is also periodic boundary conditions. And the value of theta here at the top is 2 pi. So we have psi for all values of i, and for the last value in theta, that's m, and then that's supposed to be equal to the second point. So that means minus psi i comma 2 equals 0. Okay? Uh, what are the k values for the top? So the k value for the top, we're starting here now on the left. So that's 1 plus m minus 1 times n. And we're finishing on the right, which is m times n. So the increment across the top is again 1. Uh, the i comma m index then becomes k. And the i comma 2 index, you have to figure out what is the appropriate index in terms of k. Those two rows of the identity matrix get subtracted and get put into the k row of A. And the right-hand side is again 0. OK, so let me summarize. We're trying to uh, put the boundary conditions into our equation a psi equals b. To do that, we need to, to replace rows of A by corresponding rows of the identity matrix or the difference between two rows of the identity matrix. We also have to replace the corresponding rows of B by uh, 0 in the case of the homogeneous boundary conditions and by this free stream condition for the uh, right-hand side. Uh, personally, I found putting the proper boundary conditions in the matrix A and into the right-hand side B was, was the most difficult part of uh, constructing the code, or at least was one of the more difficult parts of constructing this code. You have to get it right, or else uh, your code will have a bug. I'm Jeff Chasnov. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.